That was pretty weak. Good morning. First, uh, I do want to just uh, congratulate you on yesterday, a tremendous concert, it was so beautiful. Uh, your hard work and dedication, uh, everything that you put in last week uh, was put on display. And uh, proud of you guys and uh, enjoyed it so, so much. Question for you this morning, how many of you, maybe when you set out on a family vacation, have run into a sign like this? All right. What's your general impression? What's, what's sort of the first instinct that, that comes to mind when you see that sign? What, 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 what do you think? <laughs> like, ah, ah, frustrating. And the, here's the reason, um, sort of, uh, I don't know, have we lost, lost touch there somewhere or not? There we go. All right. See, detours are usually more like this, right? See, that's, that's how, how detours generally work. In life, just like in road trips, we often encounter detours. Right? We often encounter situations and circumstances that we never saw coming. Right? That, that we didn't plan. How many of you are, like you say, I'm, I'm a planner. I like a, a very good plan. All right. Some of you. How many of you are more like, I just get in the car and just go for it. Just kind of go on an adventure. All right. We're sort of evenly split there. But, but all of us are familiar with, with making plans. And a lot of times we plan things for our lives, right? We, we plan how things are going to go. We have dreams and plans. And those are good things. God, God's given us the capacity to do that. But what we'll soon discover in life is that there are often detours in life. Now, Sometimes they come because of our own decisions and our own choices. Sometimes our own actions are the things that cause us to end up on a detour in life. But sometimes it's things that, that we have absolutely no control over. Absolutely something that we never planned for, never saw coming. And many times when we encounter detours in life, it can be really difficult. They don't make sense. We don't understand what God is doing. Right? We don't understand where He's leading us. And, and it just can be very difficult and often what we'll see is that on these detours that God leads us away from where we think we should be going. Like we think we know what God's plan is for our life. We, we think we know what he's put on our heart to do but sometimes he leads us in ways that take us the very opposite way of what we think. This morning I want us to consider the detours of life and what God would have us to do on them and in them. And God has been leading his people, right, ever since the beginning of creation. And I want us to take a look at the book of Exodus this morning. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 13. And then in just a couple moments we'll also look at some passages from Exodus chapter 14. And as we come to those passages, we come to a very familiar part of the story, the history of God's people, Israel. Right? And, and I know that these, these passages will be familiar to most all of you. Right? This is the period of time where God is leading his people out of Egypt. Right? They ended up there because of the famine that was going on. And you remember the story of Joseph and how God used Joseph to bring his family to Egypt. But while they were there, leadership changed and the Hebrew people became slaves. And they were slaves in Egypt for over 400 years. Right? I don't know about you, but how would you agree that's a long time, right? 400 years. It's, in fact, it was over 400 years. And many of the people began, you know, they had heard stories about the God who made them and created them. They had heard about their ancestor Abraham and the promises that God had made. They knew the stories about Joseph. But God hadn't shown up in a long time. But God had not forgotten his people. Right? God's timing it is never what we would usually expect. But it is always good. It is always good. It's always right on time. And God raises up a man named Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. Of course, Pharaoh is not interested in losing his labor force, and so he doesn't agree with Moses' demand to free the, the Hebrew slaves. And of course, you know the, the plagues happen, and Pharaoh continues to harden his heart, and it's not until after the death of the firstborn, it's not until that moment that Pharaoh finally relents and releases the Hebrews. And God was promising that he was going to take them out of Egypt and back to the land of Canaan, back to the promised land, back to the land that he had originally promised to Abraham and his descendants. And so we're going to pick up the story in Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. So read with me, uh, and we'll look at just two verses to begin. 
It says, when Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them on the road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest way from Egypt to the Promised Land. For God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them along a route through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. And the Israelites left Egypt like a marching army. So God has raised up Moses, who was very reluctant and unlikely as the one that God would choose. And I'm so thankful, right, that God often uses reluctant and unlikely people. I would very much consider myself one of those people. I first sort of felt God's call for the direction on my life while I was a camper here. But it took me three years, right? It took me three years to really say yes to that. But I'm so thankful that God's patient. And God was patient with Moses. And God raised him up and God used him. And God is now at work leading his people. But I find it interesting that in the text there, it says that God did not, did not lead them on the road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though it was the shortest way. How many of you, when you're traveling, like to go the shortest way? All right, the shortest way, I think, is the best way, right? Quickest time, let's get there, right? That's how I sort of operate, not just in driving, but I think a lot of times we operate like that in life, right? We want to get there, and we want to get there now. And we live in, in a world where we live in what I would call an on-demand world, right? How many of you get frustrated if the, if, the, if, the, if the page on the internet doesn't load immediately? All right, anybody? All right, we live out in the country, like we have terrible internet, right? And so you sit there and wait and wait, right? We, we, we are used to things happening right now. But the shortest way and the quickest way is not always God's way. The shortest way and the quickest way is not always God's way. Look, look back at, look at, back at, at the verse there, because look at what it says. It says that God did not lead them on the shortest road because he said this. Actually, I'll just slide up here. He said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Right? These people, the people of God, but they didn't know God. Right? They had heard about God. They would begun to see God at work in the plagues, but they don't know God. And God knows that they are not ready for what was up ahead. They, they weren't ready. You know, sometimes we, we think that we're ready. We think we're ready for the next thing. We're, we're sure that we're ready for the next thing. But sometimes we realize we're not ready. We're not ready. And God's people were not ready. You know, there's going to be times in life where God takes you and he takes me on detours. Not because he's mad at us, right? Not because he's frustrated with us, not because he's punishing us, but because he has a purpose in the detour. Because he has a plan for our lives that is different than what we've planned, different than what we would expect, different than what we think is right, but is good. And many times, most times, it won't make sense. And we're going to see that unfold in how God leads his children of Israel. So let's, let's continue. Let's jump down to verses 21 and 22. It says, The Lord guided them by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. That way they could travel, whether it was day or night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from their sight. And so God's not leading them on the shortest way. He's not leading them the way that you and I would have mapped out in our GPS. But he is absolutely leading them, visibly, powerfully. Now, I don't know about you, but how many of you think it would be really cool if God led you with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night? Wouldn't that be awesome? Like, wouldn't that be just amazing? Wouldn't that be great? Like, that would make it so much easier, wouldn't it? Like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I? Oh, there's the cloud. That's where I'm going, right? And I can promise you, if you were here, it would often lead to a practice room, okay? <laughs> God leads his people. God leads his people. But sometimes we might wonder, because we don't have the cloud and we don't have the pillar of fire, we might wonder, am I really, am I following God? Am I, am I really on the right direction? Right? And I want you to know that even though we don't have a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, 
that God just as much wants to lead his children today as he did then. And he's given us his Holy Spirit who lives within us. And, and I, I really, really appreciate Drew's uh, testimony this morning. So proud of you and uh, proud of what God's done in your life. But I appreciate what you shared, right? Because we need to walk close with God if we're going to get direction from God, right? We need to be hearing from his word. We need to be spending time in prayer because it's through those things that God will bring sensitivity to his leading in our life. It's how he will direct us and prompt us. But God desires to lead his people. Look at Psalm 31 verse 3. The psalmist says, For you are my rock and my fortress. You, for your name's sake, you lead me and you guide me. He says, you're my rock, you're my fortress, you protect me, but you lead me and you guide me. God leads his children. And if you're seeking to follow God in your life, he will sometimes lead you down detours, but you can be confident if you're seeking after God, right, which we talked about this past week, if you're seeking to follow him, if you're seeking to know him, Right? You can be confident. You can be absolutely confident that he will direct your steps. But here's what you need to know. God knows that the shortest distance is not always and often the best distance. Right? The shortest distance is not always or often the best distance. We think it is. I think it is. But the shortest distance is not always the best distance. There were things that the Israelites needed to still know, learn and know about God. They just weren't ready, right? And we know from knowing the whole story, they ultimately weren't going to be ready for 40 years. They weren't ready. And so God had to lead them in a way that didn't make sense to them. But it absolutely made sense to him. And God was about to unfold for them something that they could have never dared to imagine, something they could have never even begun to comprehend. He was about to reveal himself in ways that they needed to see him. And you know, sometimes God does the same things in our lives. We, he takes us down detours, right? He takes us on paths that we didn't plan for. Like, I did not plan to sprain my ankle, right? I promise you, it was not in my plans. It wasn't, in, it wasn't on my radar, right? And it, it sort of disrupted my routine a little bit here. I didn't plan for that. But sometimes God allows things in our lives that we didn't plan for in order to show us things that we need to see and we need to know. And so they didn't know all that God was doing. But here's what they needed to know, what you and I need to know is this, is that God knows the way through the wilderness. Remember back there as we read, it said he, he didn't lead them on the shortest path. He didn't lead them through the territory of the Philistines, but instead he led them out into the wilderness. And sometimes the detours of life are going to really feel like you're in the wilderness. How many of you say, I've, I've spent some time in like real wilderness? Anybody? All right. Right? There's, there's nothing there, right? That's what makes it wilderness. It, it doesn't, there's nothing that, that seems to be there other than wilderness, right? And so sometimes God's going to lead you in a place that you say, I, I don't see what's here. This isn't, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. This isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. But I want you to be confident, right, that God is leading you. He's guiding you. He has a purpose in the detours. He has a plan. And, and here's what you have to understand. Right? That God is never in a hurry. Okay? God is never, ever in a hurry. <laughs> See what I'm saying? God's not in a hurry. How many of you tend to get in hurries? All right? All right it's just kind of part of life. Like, we get in a hurry, we get in a rush. Sometimes we think life is passing us by and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. God's not in a hurry. God is never, he's always perfectly on time, but never, ever in a hurry. God's not in a hurry. He knows, he knows the way through the wilderness. Right? God knows the way through the wilderness. Whatever it is that you're going through, maybe you'd say, you know what, I, I, I'm sort of on a detour right now. Right, in my life, I can sense that, that, that God's kind of taken me on a detour. And I want you to know, if that's true, you're exactly where God wants you to be. And if you're not on a detour, there's one coming. But that's okay, because God knows the way through the wilderness. Let's look at chapter 14. And just to kind of set up what's happened now, they have left, right? But Pharaoh starts to regret his decision. 
he starts to think, wait a minute. I, I can't afford to lose this labor force. I cannot. This, no, I want them back. And so he sends his army to go get the Hebrews, to go get the Israelites and bring them back. Remember now, God has been leading them through the wilderness and he has led them right to a place near the Red Sea. And on either side of them, there are mountains, right? And there's an ocean, if you will, in front of them. And now they get word that Pharaoh's army is coming. And they are what? Imagine, all right, just picture this. You got a mountain on one side, a mountain on the other side, an ocean in front of you, an army behind you. How do you feel? Trapped. I think I heard someone say it. Or you feel trapped and panicked. And so look at, at verse, verses 10 through 12 in Exodus 14. As Pharaoh and his army approached the people of Israel, they could see them in the distance marching towards them. And the people began to panic. And they cried out to the Lord for help. And then they turned against Moses and complained, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? Why did you make us leave? Didn't we tell you to leave us alone while we were still in Egypt? For our Egyptian slavery was far better than dying out here in the wilderness. You know, when God leads you on a detour, sometimes it's going to be tempting to say, I think I should just go back. This isn't worth it. This is too hard. This is too difficult. This doesn't make sense. I don't like this. And, and so even though they had been slaves and subjected to cruelty and harsh work and little food, even though they lived a, a, a very difficult life, now they're like, hey, we, let's go. It was better in Egypt. Right? It was better in Egypt. This is not going to be the only time that they have selective memory about their past. Right? And remember, these are people who, yes, who do not know all about God because they, they've not grown up with an awareness of Him fully. But they've seen the plagues. They've seen the power of God. Right? They saw how God freed them. And yet they're really struggling to trust. And you know, it's the same for us, isn't it? Right? We've seen God's power in our life. He saved us. We've known Him. We love Him. But there's some times, there's some times that it's hard to trust God. When we don't see what he's doing, when we don't understand, when we don't perceive his work, sometimes it's hard. And sometimes it's easy to think it's mistaken and he's been mistaken. And sometimes it's easy to think that, that we should go back. But God knew what he was doing. You see, they were looking, what, in every direction. They were looking at this obstacle on the right and this obstacle on the left, that obstacle in the front, Oh, and by the way, Pharaoh's army is behind us. So where can you look if you can't go forward and you can't go right and you can't go left and you can't go back? Where do you look? Up, right? The one place they could look was up. And yes, it says they cried out to God, but we can see by their response there wasn't much faith in their crying out, was there? Because they cried out to God and then they immediately complained and blamed Moses for their situation. But look at what Moses says. Verses 13 and 14. Moses told the people, do not be afraid. Now you want to talk about a faith statement. Moses doesn't yet know what God is going to do about their problem. Right? He doesn't know what's about to happen. But he believes based on what he has seen God do. And what God has told him, that God is going to come through for them. That's faith. That's faith. So he says, don't be afraid. Just stand where you are and watch the Lord rescue you. For the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. For the Lord himself will fight for you. And you won't have to lift a finger in your defense. Right? God led Israel on a detour and he led them into a dead end. God led Israel onto a detour that led to a dead end. Right? We've all, how many of you have ever turned, like either your parents were driving, your dad was driving, and you turned down a dead end street, all right, by mistake, right? Oh, I've got to back up, got to go around. It's frustrating. But God's dead ends are designed not so that we'd back up and go around, but so that we would look up, that we would look up and see him and look for what only he can do. Of course, we know what God was about to do, right? We know that God was about to split that sea wide open. 
right, that God caused, as the Bible says, an east wind to blow all through the night and dried out the seabed. And he allowed Israel to walk through. And while he was doing that, it says the pillar of cloud and then the pillar of fire as darkness came. It moved from in front of them to behind them to shield them from the armies of Pharaoh. And God became their protection and their guard. Right? And God miraculously and marvelously led them through the Red Sea. God did for them what only God could do for them. And God is able to make a way for his children. And God is able to make a way for you and for me. No matter what our circumstances, no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, God is able to make a way. And what God did for them, he desires to do for us. Now, he's probably not going to split bodies of water open for you, literally, although he could. But in that situation that you might find yourself in, you say, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I can't, I, I can't go back. I can't go left. I can't go right. I can't go forward. It's then that God calls us to look up and then trust him. See, the important thing in life is not that we can see that where we're going, but that we have our eyes focused on the God who knows where we're going, right? It's not so important that I know where I'm going. It's so important that my eyes, my heart, my mind are focused on God and seeking Him. Because just like Moses had to exercise faith, it requires faith to navigate the detours of life. Right? God's going to put you in positions where you have to trust Him. Right? And God's not doing that because He's mean. God's not doing that because He likes to have fun. Right? God's doing that because He loves you so much. And He wants to grow faith in you because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please Him. Right? For God rewards those who earnestly or wholeheartedly seek Him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Right? God's going to lead you to those places where we have to trust Him. So I just want to give you three things this morning. Three things to remember. Whether you're in a detour now or God takes you on a detour soon. Three things that we can remember. Number one, remember that God is in control. It's so easy. It's so easy when circumstances happen in our life that don't make sense. Circumstances, as we talked about, that we knew God could have prevented. But God has allowed. It's so easy sometimes to panic. Right? How many of you would say, I've, I've panicked before? All right? Me too. Me too. It's so easy to panic. But we need to remember, no, wait a minute, God is in control. Psalm 46, verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Right? Sometimes you just, in the chaos of life, and when the circumstances are confusing, and when you don't understand, and when it doesn't make sense, sometimes you just have to stop. And be still and say, wait a minute, God is still God. Right? He's still the Almighty. He's still on the throne. He's still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's still ruling and He's still reigning. And He's still good and He still loves me and He is with me. Be still and know that I am God. Remember that God is in control. Corey Ten Boom, who many of you may have heard her testimony or her story, she was imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp because her family hid Jews during the Holocaust. And while she was there, she endured some horrendous circumstances. She was there with her sister. And they went through all kinds of trials there. Right? All kinds of abuse. But even in the midst of that, and she even watched her own sister die there, even in the midst of all of that, she sensed anew and believed that God was God. That He was good. That He was in control. And that He was with her. And so she said this, and so I wanted to tell a little bit about her story to give context to it. She says, there is no panic in heaven, only plans. Right? That didn't come from somebody who just lived a perfect, easy, comfortable, safe life. That was somebody who went through the worst of the worst. Somebody who had to learn to thank God for fleas. Right? She tells the story. Of how their, their bunks and their, where they had to sleep were infested with fleas. And her sister was the one who said, we have, the Bible says to give thanks in all things. Right? And, and she says, we can't give thanks for the fleas. Right? Like, how many of you just say, there's a limit, right? <laughs> there's a limit. But her sister said, no, we have to give thanks for the fleas. And it was not until after experience there that she learned that one of the reasons they were not abused more by the guards was because the guards were terrified of the fleas. See, you, sometimes you just don't know 
what God, you could say, God, these fleas are, why have you, why could you not take, at least take the fleas away? And maybe you're in a situation where you say, I don't understand why God isn't taking the fleas away. But you don't realize that it's that very thing that God is using to protect you. It's that very thing that God is using to preserve you. We don't know what God is doing. So just remember, there's no panic in heaven. Only plans. That leads us to number two. Remember that God does have a plan. God does have a plan. God has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for all of our lives. And detours are part of that plan. Detours are part of that plan. And detours are challenging to us. They're confusing to us. But they're not so to God. He sees the end from the beginning. Right? The beginning from the end. Either way you look at it. Right? And so it's not hard for God. And so we need to remember that He has a plan. Remember He has a plan. You know, God took that insurmountable obstacle that the Hebrews were facing, right? A Red Sea, an incrossable barrier in their life. And God made a highway through the ocean that night. Right? And if God can make a highway through the ocean, He can make a way for you. He can make a way from you. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. I am the Lord thy God. Is there anything too hard for me? Right? That, you know, there are a lot of rhetorical questions that we encounter in life, right? Some of you are that annoying person that answers people's rhetorical questions, right? God often, though, asks rhetorical questions. I don't think there's a more powerful rhetorical question in history than this one. Where God through the prophet speaks to his people and says, I am the Lord thy God, I am the Lord your God. Is there anything, anything too hard for me? Nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too hard for God. God knows the way through the wilderness. You and I don't know the way through the wilderness, but God knows the way through the wilderness. So remember he is in control. Remember he has a plan. And then thirdly, remember, remember to look up. Remember to look up. You see, when you're in the wilderness and when you're on the detour, you need to keep looking up. You need to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And sometimes that's when it's the hardest to do. Right? Sometimes that's when we don't feel like opening God's Word. Sometimes it's when we don't feel like praying. Right? But it's, it's, it's in those moments where we say, I'm not going to, to follow my feelings, but I'm going to follow God. I'm going to trust Him even in the wilderness, even when I don't feel it. Right? I mean, there are some wonderful times, like our feelings are God-given things, right? They're good, but they can mislead us. They can lead us not where we're supposed to be. There are going to be some times where your feelings line up exactly with what God wants in your life, and so you experience that joy and that freedom. But there's going to be other times where your, your feelings don't line up with God's will. There's going to be times where you just don't feel it. And that's okay. God hasn't changed. He hasn't gone anywhere. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't forsaken you. He hasn't forgotten you. And He wants you to trust Him. Psalm 121, verses 1 through 3 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And He will not let your foot be moved, and He who keeps you will not slumber. Isn't that a great reminder? The psalmist says, I have to lift up my eyes to the Lord. I have to lift up my eyes to God. Right? And he says, he says, my help, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Right? If God made heaven and earth, if God created all that is, we can look up to him and know he's big enough. He's big enough to lead us through. God brought Israel to a place of utter desperation. Right? They were utterly desperate when they were trapped there. But the reason, the purpose that God did that was that so he could show himself to them in a way they would never have seen him otherwise. And God may lead you and I to a place of, of desperation. God may lead us to places that are hard. God may lead us to places that don't make sense. God would lead us in places that we would never choose to go on our own and probably never go back to again. But God has a purpose for them and he can be trusted on the detours of life. You may be there right now. I, I, I wish it wasn't true, but you will be there one day. All of us face detours. And they sometimes are so hard and so difficult. And so that's why I want you to remember. 
Remember God is in control. Remember he's on the throne. He rules and he reigns. Right? Remember he has a plan. He has a plan for this world. He has a plan for all things. And he has a plan for you, for your life. Right? One of my favorite verses is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And it literally says that we are God's masterpiece, his workmanship. It's the Greek word for poem. Right? A carefully thought out, planned out creation. You're God's masterpiece and you were created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. God has a purpose and a plan for your life and that detour that you're on is in no way going to stop God from fulfilling his purpose. Right? Even if it's a detour of your own causing, it is no way going to stop God from accomplishing his purpose and plans for your life. Remember he has a plan and remember, remember, remember to look up. God brought Israel to a place of utter desperation so that he might bring them to a place of utter dependence. God wants us to be utterly dependent on him. And sometimes it's not until we have to be that we are. I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. Remember that God knows the way to the wilderness. Would you bow your heads this morning? We're going to close in just a moment. But just in a moment of reflection as we think about, okay, what is it that, as I've been here this morning, as we've read scripture together, as we worshiped in song, as we've opened God's word, what is it, as we heard a testimony, what is it that God is wanting to, to do in your life right now? How is he leading you to respond to him? I, I think that God never brings us together as his people to worship and to hear his word and testimony and to glorify him without wanting to work in our lives. And so I just want you to, to ask God right now, God, what, what is it that you want to show me? What is it that you want me to know? And then as you're thinking about that, just with no one looking around and your eyes closed, how many of you would just say, Pastor Dan, would you, would you just pray for me? Because I, I, I feel like I'm on a detour. And I'll admit, it's, it's scary and I've struggled to trust, but I want to trust God and I want his leading and I want to follow. How many of you just say, would you pray for me? That's me right now. Thank you so much for your courage. Thank you so much for your honesty. You're not alone this morning. You are not alone. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, I thank you that you are in control, that you are on your throne, that you are ruling and reigning. And Father, we confess this morning that we sometimes lose sight of that. Father, I confess that I lose sight of that sometimes. Father, I pray this morning that the truth of your word and how you led your people out of Egypt and Father, I pray that, that you would use that truth, Father, to remind us of how you work sometimes. Father, that you don't always take us on the shortest route. You don't take us often in the way that would make sense to us. But sometimes, Father, you lead us into the wilderness. But Father, I pray that we would learn to trust you and learn to follow you. And Father, I pray that, that we would learn to seek you in your word and in prayer and through wise counsel. Father, so that we can follow your leading and your guidance. And Father, I pray for each person this morning that's here. You know each of our hearts and each of our needs. I pray that you would be at work powerfully in our lives. But I pray specifically for those who acknowledge or indicated, Father, that they feel like they're on a detour right now. Father, I pray that right now through the power of your spirit that you would encourage them. Father, I pray that you just remind them of your presence in their life. I pray that you remind them of the, your love. I pray that you remind them of your care and your provision. I pray that you remind them of your promises and your power. And Father, I pray that you would help them to trust you and to walk with you and to follow you along that detour. And they would experience your leading and your guiding. And Father, to one day, whether it is in this life or the next, to look back and to say, God has been good. He was faithful all the way. And even the fleas, even the fleas were part of his purpose. Father, grant us faith to trust you in the detours. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.